Hello guys, welcome back to lesson 7 and 2. That's a continuation to wind up what we did in part 1 of lesson 1. In summary, what we have uh, discussed in lesson 7 is that the metal with a negative E value is more reactive than a metal with a positive E value. For example, potassium here has negative value, copper has positive value. We know potassium is more reactive than copper. So that is where we are drawing our conclusion that if you have two metals, one has a positive value and another negative value. As I said in the exam, you'll be given element, let's say element A and then element B. Then you are given the electrode potential, let's say this is positive, 1.24, and then this you are given a negative, uh, let's say 0 0.92 volts. Then you are asked to identify between two, which is more reactive, when they are, if they are metals. Then B is more reactive than A, in short, that is what we are saying. And that is what we can see even from the type of value that we have, and as we traditionally know, that this would up to somewhere there to be the order of reactivity of metals, starting with the most reactive to the least reactive. So we can draw that conclusion from there. But um, what if you are given only metals with negative value? Let's say A and B, negative, negative. In that case, A is more reactive than B. The more negative, the element is the more reactive, that is in terms of metals. For metals, a more negative metal is more reactive than a less negative metal. For example now, even these two, potassium and sodium. Potassium is more reactive than sodium. Both of them have negative values. But potassium is more negative compared to sodium. So a more negative metal is more reactive than a less negative metal. And then to the point that also I mentioned in uh, part one of this lesson seven is that the solution of a more reactive metal, a more reactive element, element or metal can be stored in a container of a less reactive metal because the less reactive metal cannot displace a more reactive metal from the uh, solution. And then a solution of a less reactive metal cannot be stored in a container of a more reactive metal. The reason is because the more reactive metal, or that which is the container now, will dissolve. It will go into the solution forming ions, so doing to, uh, by displacing the ions of the less reactive from the solution. So the less reactive metal is going to be removed from the solution. So you will see some solid deposited to the bottom of the container. And at the same time, the container will have dissolved. So you will find uh, holes on the container. The container will be damaged. So and uh, most of the solution will pour out once uh, the container uh, develops the holes because of the dissolving process. Then uh, this I had mentioned according to the, what we have there, the electrode potential table there, that the strongest oxidizing agent, so usually what is the strongest becomes weakest on the other end. So the strongest reducing agent, it cannot also be the strongest oxidizing agent. So a strongest oxidizing uh, reducing agent becomes the weakest oxidizing agent. While the strongest oxidizing agent becomes the weakest reducing agent. So this is a strongest, uh, the strongest oxidizing agent. So this which is the strongest oxidizing agent, it also happens to be the weakest reducing agent. It cannot be strong oxidizing agent at the same time strong reducing agent. So if it is an oxidizing agent, it cannot be the same time a reducing agent. So the strength to the other end will reduce, so it will be the weakest reducing agent. And this one here, the strongest reducing agent becomes weakest oxidizing.
oxidizing agent. So also use it, therefore, this electrode potential that you can tell, which is the strongest oxidizing agent, as I had stated, that the more negative it is, the stronger and using agent it is, the more readily it is oxidized. And then the more positive it is, the stronger oxidizing agent it is, the more readily it is reduced. And then finally, an oxidizing agent undergoes reduction during reaction and a reducing agent undergoes oxidation, which are indicated there. So if it is a reducing agent, it cannot reduce itself. So or what will happen itself will not be reduction. If it is a reducing agent, it reduces others. An agent is a doer, so it does reduction. So it will reduce others. In the process itself, it becomes oxidized. So the reverse happens, the opposite. Because it is reducing others, itself becomes oxidized. And here, an oxidizing agent will be oxidizing others. As it is oxidizing others, itself becomes reduced. So these are some of the terminologies that you have to get very, very clearly. And so for my uh, candidates, my students back at home there, those who are accessing these lessons online, please, there's uh, just uh, three simple questions based on what we have done in lesson seven, part one. I want you to attempt that, and as I said, when we meet to go through that work, I'll mark and then we'll revise. So I'll just uh, I'll, uh, I'll probably let me just project it on your screen. Then you can pause and copy that work. So this is the assignment I want you to go through. Uh, predict whether a reaction will occur between the following. So you have A, B, and see there. So attempt uh, that simple exercise and then we shall go through that work. I shall mark and then we revise. So I wish you all the best as you stay at home. Make sure you continue perusing through your notes. Then look for revision books. The revision questions I have posted on the WhatsApp wall group. Make sure you go through those topical questions, particularly the Form 4 syllabus that we are just covering online. Those questions, they will help you to understand those concepts. So ensure that you go through that work thoroughly. So, and as I said, if you have questions, you can send back through the comment button there on your YouTube screen. Those who are using the WhatsApp, you can also uh, send the questions. You can ask for any consultation, then I will see how I can help you. Then those who are watching on YouTube, please don't forget to subscribe and even uh, press the notification uh, button there, that bell sign, so that whenever I post new videos, more lessons, uh, you get them instantly or you are uh, notified that there is um, um, more lessons that I have posted there in forms of video. Otherwise. I wish you all the best. Keep safe. Wash your hands. Sanitize. Cover your nose and mouth.